Welcome back everybody to Boys on Film. Today a film nominated for the Rain Dance Discovery Award at the British Independent Film Awards. Directed by René Van Penevis, it stars Charlie Palmer Rothwell and Thomas Turgus. And also the daughter of Roman Polanski, who is Morgane Polanski. Uh, I'm joined by my co-host, of course, it is uh, Sean Vickers. Hey Sean. Hi everyone and hi Phil. How, How are you, you doing? Yeah, good, good, good. Do you want to set the scene? It has a kind of Shane Meadows feel to it. I think that's one way of kind of like, if you can kind of get the texture right in your mind. And yeah, it follows a group of friends who are kind of living day to day. And they are car thieves, general thieves, you know. It really follows those story about their relationships together. <clears throat> and primarily around a chap called Rob. Kind of the depth of his story. And I think when you look at the characters, it's Rob who we focus on the most or who the film focuses on the most um, and his relationship with his father uh, and then his broader relationship with, you know, living on an estate and basically trying to get through day by day. So Raj, who of course is my other co-host on uh, Boys of Film, if you, if you are new here, he would call this a slice of life drama. He kind of very much thinks that this British gritty film is, you know, is, is very typical of what we've, what we would produce i think we're very good at that normally i mean mm. this is quite realistic this film yeah and there's something about and we can come back to there has been some criticism about pace and around um the texture of it but i'm i think there's a counterbalance to it yeah it is very gritty very real it's working class people trying to get through um and trying to survive and the bond between those individuals and there's some there's some strong characters in here uh, thomas turgus is in here who you know has has built his career initially working with shane meadows so i think he's he's well cast um i guess the que the wider question would be is he now typecast yeah because he does a lot of roles like this um you mentioned morgan polanski uh, as cassia and i would like to talk about her a little bit more because i think her character is very empathic and then charlie palmer rothwell who plays rob and such an interesting character, really. You can watch this and say, well, why doesn't Rob do something different? Why doesn't he leave? Why doesn't whatever? Those options are not available to someone like Rob in the situation that he's in. And so the way the film plays out, and at times it feels very mundane, but if you were in Rob's shoes, your day would be mundane because there's all you're really doing is waking up, looking after your father, thinking about how you're going to survive for the day, and that translates itself into some kind of crime eating sleeping repeat so i think the texture of the film is right and i know it has it has received some criticism about that but i actually think that criticism is misplaced because it is kind of a very almost like benefit class mundanity that ha has been picked up here by uh rennie van rennie pan yeah it rennie van Penevis. It definitely needs to be mundane because I don't think it would be a, a true representation of what he's going through. I think you're absolutely right because, of course, he's looking after his terminally ill father and he does have, you know, really difficult uh, times doing that. You know, it, it doesn't shy away from from showing what it's really like. Should we should we talk about Thomas Turgus? Because, of course, we yes, saw a lot more of him in something like This Is England. And you're right, you know, he does play a similar character, although... He does actually show more expressions because, of course, he's 28 now, so he's a lot older than he was when he was making This Is England. But I, I quite like that. I quite like the fact that you're seeing more of his personality, although it's not the biggest role. I mean, he's definitely not the main character in this because Rob is, is the main character. So he plays a character called Leo. Everyone is just trying to get by. That's the vibe. And it's very true. You know, there it's, you know it, it, everyone is just trying to get by. And But Leo... I find a bit more Machiavellian than Rob. I think Rob's a bit more straightforward um, because I think his his central arc of his story is actually his father and looking after his father. Whereas with Leo, you don't get as much depth around his background or his family. But what you do get is someone who's kind of on the take and someone who is trying to, you know, to, to better themselves even through a life of crime, they have big, he has big aspirations and there's a sense that it'll kind of meet those aspirations, but who he kind of tramples on on the way is slightly different. So I think you get something around um, Rob versus Leo, two people doing very similar things, which, you know, uh, but Leo feels more ground, Leo feels more kind of like he's out for himself. Whereas Rob, I think he's grounded in something more. And I think that really translates as, as Leo uh, and Rob interact with Kessia and how Kessia really brings that out of, of the characters. I don't know what you thought, Rob. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. But. I mean, it's interesting you mentioned about the pace. We'll come on to that in a second, but I just want to say 
first of all about the characters because because of what they're doing there there is a, a feeling on my, on my part anyway that i i didn't really care much for the characters it's a really difficult one because i wasn't drawn in enough i i, I felt a disconnect it was a shame that there was a disconnect because i wanted wanted to be more emotionally involved and i wasn't really was yeah, I think that's, I think it's 89 minutes long and it feels like 89 minutes long. But as I say, I think that's deliberate um, because um, there's a hopelessness driven by the situation. You know, that's what you that's what I took from the film, which is day in, day out. This is someone's life. And at some point they get they will get caught. And at some point they will go to prison. Yeah. Like it's just kind of like and you get some of that playing through in the story. I think what's nice about Kezia's character is she brings she brings to a very hopeless situation a sense of. She's quite empathic and she's kind of this caring person. And at some point she snaps the edges off some of that kind of very harsh, very um, kind of like blunt way of living because she's, she's this warm character. And I think her interaction with Rob brings out more of who he is as a person. So more of his uh, behaviors and emotions and feelings are much warmer, much softer. Uh, and you see that towards the end of the film as they get closer together. Um, and we must remember that, Leo, so Thomas Ger- Turgus's character and Kesio are together early yeah. on in the film, and it's it's so interesting her how her role and her influence on is the same. It doesn't change; she's a constant. But the impact on those different characters because it really helps Rob to flourish. And I say, snap those edges off and be a, a bit more of a round, more warmer person. It's quite interesting how education played a part in that as well, in a negative way, because there's a conversation with with her and uh, Rob's dad. Tom Fisher, I think, is the actor, isn't he? And I think he played the part really well. I mean, it felt, I, I believed in in him as a character. But it's an interesting conversation because she's saying, oh, I don't go to college now. Uh, college, you know, didn't do anything for me. And it's interesting, you know, because a lot of people would, would be in that position. They they wouldn't benefit from education. And that's obviously why they turned to crime, because they, they felt that, you know, they could obviously prosper more, I suppose, in, the, in that respect. They could, they could get more back. Than, yeah. than maybe a job that they wouldn't be be fitted to, um, but but I thought I thought that was quite quite an interesting development in in the story, and it does yeah. have a real bleakness to it at the beginning. But there's a lot of sunshine in this movie as well because it's filmed yeah. in a, you know, in, in on on very sunny days. So I suppose it has that that balance of to I suppose not to make it too too bleak. Yeah, and there, I just say that there are moments of um, pleasure in this film, moments of joy. There's a bit where. Um, they all kind of go swimming and it's kind of feels like light relief against a very kind of oppressive kind of existence. There's moments where they, they will search out and find moments of relief and moments of pleasure. And yet that comes through in the film, but yeah, there's a lot of hustle in this film. Um, and I find it very interesting around, it's interesting the education piece because there's also an education of the estate. So there's lots of written unwritten rules about how people operate uh, around don't snitch on your mates you know there's lots of stuff going on which is that's almost like the education and it's an it's a survival education uh around what's going on on that estate and everything else is just in they're indifferent to it because the idea is as i've mentioned gotta wake up gotta look after my dad gotta make sure he's okay gotta eat gotta find some money you know and that's and that's really important and you know at times i thought to myself why isn't rob pushing leo away but actually there's no point he has to, he needs that network. Yeah. You know? So there were interesting points where I just think, wouldn't he just tell him to F off? And I, then I thought, no, he wouldn't. Cause what, what's he going to do? He's still on the estate. He's still going to wake up in the morning. He's still going to have to try and somehow make some money. And so, and Leo's the best chance he's got of it, whether he thinks, whether they get on or whether they're actually friends or whether they're, that I found very, very interesting. So I believe this is based on a short film called Jacked. Um, okay. And I just wonder whether I would have, you know enjoyed that more as a short than a feature because i there were times when i just i don't know maybe that's just because the subject matter that i just found it quite uncomfortable i think it's a film that needs to be though isn't it because of its subject matter i think it needs to be you you need to feel that it's it's difficult yeah i even just to know rene penavis's approach to this or what or kind of what grounded him in in some of this and he, i think he captures something um, but often to capture something like that, you have to have lived it because I felt there's a lot of lived experience in this film. Um, but I don't know Rene's background, but it does feel like there's some lived experience in this movie. Definitely. So ultimately, marks out of ten. It's a really difficult one because I don't, I don't think I would go 
so far as to say I enjoyed it, but I appreciate the talents behind the movie. You know, I think it was a well-directed film and I think it, you know, it definitely had a mood about it. And I think it was an interesting subject matter that would make people think more maybe about how they would approach people in real life that, that behave like this. And also you, you do see people, you see, you know, you see the background and you see uh, them living um, their lives that where it's not centered around the crime that they're committing. And, and I think that's quite interesting as well is that because you, you know, you could be quick to judge people. You don't really know the background. You don't, you don't know what, what else they're dealing with. Not that that's a justification for what no, they're doing. Of course, of course, of course. But there is... The outcome for them really is... There's no pleasure in what they're doing. You know, there's many situations where Rob's like, I don't want to do that. But he's almost painted into a corner. For him to survive and for him to look after his father, there's no discussion about it. The outcome is survival. The outcome is not theft. Um, that's just a way of, of surviving. And therefore, yeah, there's no pleasure derived from it. I don't think it's glamorised in any way. Um, it's just a means to an end. Yeah, totally. Uh, I want to get your rating first because I'm I'm curious. To s- I'm between to a five and a six. If I'm really yeah, honest. yeah, I'm the same. I couldn't decide uh, on whether it's uh, five or six though, because I think five does do it a little bit of a disservice because I think it's you know obviously a, a well made film. I go I go six out of ten, just to be on the nose because I think there is some interesting character development and I and I broadly think understand what Rene Van Penevis was trying to do with this movie um and so yeah six for me yeah so check it out all the details down below of course uh in the description box and if you do get to see Lutu let us know what you think because we're always after your comments we've done so much recently it's a sin we've been unpacking that every Friday and we've got lots happening over the next few weeks as well in March we've got the BFI Flare Festival Amazing. which is the LGBTQ plus uh, film festival in London normally at the BFI on London South Bank but of course it's all online this year because of the pandemic and we have South by Southwest uh, in America, Raj has got me a pass for that. Yeah, a lot going on. Yeah, as you mentioned, It's a Sin is still rolling. Our weekly updates are going out every Friday, so dive into there. Um, BFI Flare, brilliant. Can't wait, actually. Um, and I think we saw the success of LFF, London Film Festival, working online. Yeah. So I'm less... I'm kind of I'm, I'm kind of know what to expect, and I think LFF worked really well, so I'm looking forward to Flare. Um, and yeah, I think it's going to be a busy year for film. And if you want to check out Sean on audio as well, I'm d- kind of itching for a video version of Unflopped. Are you, <laughs> ever, are you ever going to do one of those? Do you know what's very interesting? Um, a lot of our US listeners are always like, where's the YouTube version of Unflopped? Um, it so would I really know, work. Maybe, maybe. Never say never. Um, but yeah, Unflopped is still going out there. Number one, number one UK music commentary podcast um you can get it every other friday um on you know resurrecting forgotten pop gem amazing it's a lot of work isn't it we wouldn't expect you to do a video version because it is a lot it's a hard graft a lot of work yeah <laughs> so the episodes are about 40 45 minutes so to do a video edit is quite a bit of work but we love doing it um as ever like you and i feel we spend a lot of time talking uh so yeah there's a lot of hot air there <laughs> if you if you love music and you like a forgotten pop gem unflopped is the way to go there we go good to see you sean and thank you very much for watching and i should say thank you very much for your support as well for it's a sin unpacked episode one we've just reached 2k today uh, and obviously it's going to be higher than that i would imagine by the time this goes out <laughs> but yeah thank you for your support we really, no, really appreciate it's been amazing it. thank you thank you back it's been it's been brilliant to do that and uh, i'm looking forward to the new episodes coming out see you soon thanks for watching Take care. thanks everyone